Road to Monteborg is a classic campaign. The company-sized infantry-centric missions are perfect for honing textbook tactics. However, adapting to the pocket combat can be cruelingly tough, especially when transitioning from modern combat mission titles. Here are some key lessons I learned along the way. Probably the biggest understanding was that endless hedgerow hell is not only your enemy, it can also be a friend. I call these compartments. Inside, your force is neatly isolated from the rest of the map. Importantly, you can also control the sides and see the opposite hedgerow, leaving you to solely concentrate on that. Split a couple of teams and then scouts go first. Others cover along with machine guns and mortars. Then, if no contact, the rest of the platoon follows, but only moves one to two action squares from the edge. When everyone is ready, mass them into position in one swift controlled stroke. The platoon will violently grab fire superiority and sweep the enemy aside. If you want to be absolutely sure, order them to area fire right away without waiting for contacts to appear. Terrain Analysis Basic bread and butter of any combat mission scenario, with a little twist. Here you will want to look for aforementioned compartments and any access ways along the hedgerows. Plan your main effort around these and complement with bridge teams to surprise and or bypass the enemy and an artillery plan. Indirect fire. Artillery can be considered not necessarily as just a killer, but as a facilitator of movement. Indirect fires suppress or blind the enemy and enable your men to move fast to an advantageous position. It's much better to break through with decisive overkill than to get bucked down in the first defensive line. So, use it early and use it a lot, not in drops, but in buckets. Especially if the artillery strike takes over 10 minutes to call in. This aspect is emphasized in low visibility, between the tall hedgerows, or if darkness sets on the battlefield, your observers can't see what they're hitting. Smoke barrages also work a lot better pre-planned. If you're not sure about your initial barrage target, you can always use the 5 to 15 minute delay and scout ahead within the time frame. In case of multiple batteries, the delay can be used to enact rolling barrages, where your troops follow in behind the consecutive bombardments. Additionally, the on-map 60mm mortars are your best antidote against plentiful and deadly German MG42 machine guns, preferably in direct fire mode as it's much faster and more accurate. Time. Time is tight in these scenarios. Recon audaciously and pursue mercilessly. Sometimes it's prudent to go straight for the objective and bypass targets of opportunity. However, in case you have more troops in your disposal than are needed in the main effort, you can try alternate avenues of advance. This is especially useful when one of your objectives is to destroy the enemy force. Be careful not to weaken your attack needlessly by splitting up too much. When enemy retreats, it's generally better to take the risk of chasing them down than having them form a second line of defense or slip away from the battlefield. Men will be lost in this kind of aggressive recon, but they will also be lost in a hurry when the scenario time is running out. Cons and considerations of these tactics and this campaign. Bunching up at hedgerows is vulnerable to enemy indirect fire. Someone gets the short stick. Sacrifices will have to be made in this campaign. Infantry has low firepower against heavy weapons, bunkers and tanks. Reliance on breaching charges. Also, can't recommend accidentally playing half the campaign without trees.